Yeah, my name's Xiao from Power Labs. And yeah, it's a joint work with Kong, Xiao, and Yu. And yeah, we have plenty of time, so feel free to interrupt me for any questions, okay? So let's be yeah, casual. <laughs> so yeah, uh, the, the title of this presentation is about uh, you know, authenticating web data via what well, new primitive called interactive Xenarch proofs. So here's the background. So uh, for example, there is a prover and a server, or you can see the prover as a client. So uh, the client can access uh, the data from the server using you know, a secret and uh, to, to, to uh, query the server and get the response back. So here's the question. So can we uh, do the following things that the prover convinces a, a verifier that this M or this incubated M is actually retrieved from the server without any modifications on the server side. So if, if we could allow the server to change, then he just assigned the message. But in a lot of cases, the server do not need to sign the message. For example, you just uh, retrieve your, you know, like, uh, your balance from your uh, uh, back account. There's no, sign, there's no signature. So generally, can the prover convince the verify or prove to the verify that, OK, this message is actually from the server. So a very concrete example is that can I prove to someone else that I have enough ETH in Coinbase? So just using cryptography, not you know, uh, any other trust. So this is the background that we are trying to, you know, to solve. Um, uh, in this scenario, we are focusing on this you know, transport layer security, what we call TLS protocol. So uh, TLS protocol is, is a standard web two protocol. Uh, uh, you know, uh, it offers you know, authenticity and confidentiality. So uh, why are we focusing on TLS? Because you know, all the web data are transferred you know, using this protocol. For example, like HTTPS. So everything is on HTTPS. So it's so, generally, so general that we can you know, to deploy up, up, up algorithms to uh, a lot of uh, use cases. So we are focusing on this TLS. So TLS 1.2 and TLS 1.3. So this is the, the background. Okay, so let's go a little bit deep into what TLS is doing. So basically, it has two like phrases, two phrases, phases. So first one is handshake. So it means that the client and the server negotiate uh, with uh, you know uh, a common key. So. That 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 using a, you know a very standard what we call Diffie Hammond key uh, key exchange something like that uh, the client send a random to the server the server send him back a random together with a you know a G to the X and the certificate and the signature of them then send, uh, the client send back G, G to the Y so the the common key is like G to the X to the Y and uh, uh, hash or PIF a uh, random function of the transaction so. In this way, the client and the server can negotiate uh, with a output, which is a common key uh, for the client and the server, and is used for the next uh, record phase. So record phase is that these two guys are using this common key to uh, send encrypted messages. So uh, the client is using KC uh, to encrypt the message and send it to the server. So uh, decrypt with KC. And uh, the server uses KS to send the uh, encrypted message to the uh, client, and uh, the client decrypt. So that's that's the record phase. So it's very standard, and uh, yeah, it's, it's used everywhere, uh, especially when you're using uh, you're browse, uh, using your browsers. So it's, it's, it's everywhere. So this is the the the, the, the small background of TLS, and uh, yeah. Let's go back to the problem. So we are trying to solve the problem. So there is a first trial. Uh, yeah, a very you know, trivial solution is that, given this you know, transcript, can I just use snarks or the knowledge proofs to prove that, OK, I know this randomness. I know the secret. I know the message M that generates, generates all these transcripts. Can I do this? And I think, I think this is, is, the, is the very first uh, 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 trial of, of previous paper to uh, trying to solve this. But uh, unfortunately, this cannot be done just using snarks. Uh, the reason is that, here is the thing. 
So yeah, provers can uh, use valid randomness secret and uh, 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 you know this valid message to generate uh, you know a proof. But there is one thing because uh, the client or the prover he knows all the symmetric key uh, and he can just encrypt another random message M prime and uh, replace the original ciphertext with this new ciphertext, and then he can just prove it. And yes, he can prove it because he knows all the secret key, and he can just encrypt this random M prime with this secret key, and all this transcript is valid. But the problem here is that he cannot make sure that this message is from the server. He can just generate it, but you cannot make sure, or you cannot convince the verifier that this message is from the server. It's valid, but it's, not, it's probably not from the server. So that's the key point. So yeah. And the first trial, uh, I think the first trial is uh, uh, fails. And, uh, and uh, in, a, in, a, in a previous paper that called DACO, it's decentralized oracle proposed by uh, no, uh, John and other, other, other cryptographers in, like, in 2020. Yeah, they came up with a solution. So the solution is, uh, is like this. So instead of you know, the prover and the server establish a, a channel by themselves. So the verifier is uh, participating in this handshake phase. So it's called a three-party computation handshake, or three PC handshake, which means that uh, after this process, the server can get the session key, but the prover or the client only get half of the session key, and the other half is given to the verifier, which means that the prover and the verifier together establish a channel with the server, but the prover himself cannot access to this, uh, access to this, this channel. So uh, in this case, if the prover wants to send a message to the server, he has to run a two-party computation protocol, MPC protocol, to generate this kind of ciphertext and then send to him. So, when the server send back this C, C2, okay, the prover just forward this, oh sorry, the f just forward this message to the verifier. In this case, the verifier can ensure that this C2, that, uh, this C2 is actually from the server. It's not generated by the prover himself. So it's something like a commitment, or it's, uh, it's somehow solve the problem of the first trial solution, which is to make sure that Everything sent back to the server is actually from the is actually from the server because the verifier uh, uh, you know, controls half control the, 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 the channel and the prover cannot you know manipulate this channel. So this the, this is the uh, basic idea of this Deco solution. Oh yeah, at the end at the end of, at, at the end uh, the verifier will you know send back the, his half. To the prover because okay, I'm and now I already know that C2 is from the is, uh, from the server, so I don't need to control the the the, the channel. Uh, I do not need to control the channel. So he just send back the half of the session key, and then the prover can decrypt everything. But now verify now knows that C2 is actually from the server. So next step is that in this case. So the verifier knows KV, C1, C2, and uh, okay, prover need to prove that. Okay, uh, users not prove that. I know KP, secret M, that general these stuff. So yeah, this, this kind of uh, solution works. Yeah, actually it works. Because you know, now verifier can make sure that all the message is from the server. And uh, this, uh, the, the prover also proved that Oh, I own this kind of secret. I know this kind of message. So this is good. This is good. However, there's one thing. There's you know one drawback of this solution, which means uh, uh, one thing is a data paper has to use you know uh, a maliciously secure two-piece protocol, which is very heavy. So they are using something like uh, something called authenticated garbage circuit. So it's, it's very costly. Uh, it's like more than 10 times slower than this, uh, you know, semi-honest uh, converts. And there's one other thing is that you need snarks. 
So TLS has a lot of ciphers, like SHA, like AS, like uh, multiplications over this kind of, you know, Galois field. So the prover has to uh, use use not to prove uh, the relations under this kind of, you know, unf the unfriendly ciphers, which is uh, very costly, especially for in terms of, you know, uh, proven time, in terms of, you know, memory consumption. So it's very, it's, it's, it's very heavy. And as far as I know, um, the day call, uh, you know, the, the data solution is now, is, is not, you know, deployed right now, and it's only a, a, a paper published. So, so uh, our goal is that, can we find another way to, you know, uh, you know, to, uh, uh, work on all these uh, uh, barriers. So yeah, our paper actually, yeah, propose a new uh, paradigm what we call garbage then proof. So basically, so we can replace this also get garbage circuit with semi-honest garbage circuit. Then we have 10 times improvement. And then we don't need to use ticket snarks because in the first step, we already have interaction. So you have to, you know, the prover and the verifier have to, have to, has to, have to do interactions. So we can use this kind of interactive knowledge proof. And uh, this kind of IJK is quite faster than Snarks. So, yeah, but yeah, I, I only show you the ideas here, but you know, the details is very complicated and it's not just a very simple replacement. So especially you have to use IJK to put kind of, you know, key duration functions, which is a bunch of SHA, but yeah. I think it's very efficient to prove SHA, you know, uh, statements. And uh, yeah, as a result, the uh, improvement is something like that, like this. So we actually uh, optimize this kind of uh, KDF to reduce the uh, end gates, you know, from, you know, uh, like uh, 300,000 to like three, uh, 700,000 to like 300,000, which is about uh, three times uh, improvement. And uh, the, the computation uh, is almost 10 times faster. And uh, uh, in this case, we do not measure in the snark part. If we want to uh, measure in the snark part, uh, we, uh, we could be much faster. So the communication size is like uh, 14 times low, uh, lower. And the memory, yeah, our memory consuming is, it's, it's very low, it's very small. So it's like just a uh, 100 uh, megabytes. So it's, it, it's, 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 it's very low. So, as a result, our improvements allow our product to be deployed within browsing extensions. Actually, we already developed a product that put everything in the call extension. And yeah, it's also, it's, it's already available right now. Okay, that's the, the main uh, result of the paper. So, uh, in next slides, I will uh, go a little bit, you know, uh, details of, of what we have done. Yeah, the first thing is garbage circuit. I think it's a very, it's a very uh, beautiful idea or beautiful solution to, you know, to, to solve these two PC problems. And uh, a lot of cryptographers focus on this kind of area. And there is a lot of you know, amazing op uh, optimizations to reduce the uh, computation cost and the communication cost. So here, I'm gonna show you the basic idea of this garbage circuit. So the motivation of garbage circuit is that there's two person. Uh, what we call gobbler or evaluator. Each one has a private input and they want to uh, uh, collaboratively to uh, compute the function f, x, y, and get the result. So this is a standard two PC problem. So, yes. Mm. Here I, I will give you an example how gobbler circuit works. So in, in this case, uh, the uh, gobbler has two bits input. And uh, okay, evaluate has two bits input. So now they want to uh, compute this kind of simple circuit and two end gate and one XOR gate. So yeah, the yellow wires are for gobbler and the blue wires are for uh, uh, evaluate. So in this, case, in this case, so the gobbler first uh, take this kind of circuit, he choose uh, two random labels for each wire. So for example, it's A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So for each wire, a, uh, each wire, and it's kind of random, random bits. It's kind of random 128 bits. 
And in this case, for each kind of, for each gate, he do this kind of garbling, which we call is garble, garble gate. So for, the, for example, let, uh, for this end gate, so the garbler using the input wires, so he, 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 he's using a two keyed uh, encryption scheme, he's using this kind of two uh, labels to encrypt the output label. So for example, for this gate, there is an encryption using A, B to encrypt E. So the way uh, garbler, uh, uh, garbler this gate is that the index of E is actually the index, uh, or is actually the end of index A and B. So for example, this is the end gate, so uh, only the last, uh, uh, you know, encryptions uh, uh, is using E1 because one and one is one, is, uh, zero, 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 uh, uh, zero and zero is zero, so one and one is one. So this kind of garbage circuit, garbage gate is, uh, you know, corresponding to this kind of uh, uh, specific gate. So he can do all these gates. And then, he send this garbage circuit, yeah, sorry. He send this kind of garbage circuit to the evaluate together with, you know, this kind of output gate, output label, G0, G1, which uh, represent a, a zero bit and a one bit. And together, he also send the uh, uh, input label of Gabler because if his, his, his input is zero, uh, Gabler send A zero. His, uh, the other one is uh, one, then he sends uh, C1 to the evaluator. So there are some kind of labels missing so it's uh, B and D. So there is a very standard way called the obvious transfer. So the evaluate uh, use this kind of bits, his input bits as selected bits. And uh, he can select the label B and the label D according to his uh, uh, input. For example, now he gets B1 and D1. And the governor cannot uh, figure out uh, what kind of label he's choosing. And uh, also the evaluator cannot know uh, other, you know, B, B0 and B, D0. So in this case, the, uh, the evaluator now gets A0, B1, C1, D1. So for each gate, he do the decryption. So for example, in the first gate, uh, the evaluate can get can decrypt the third uh, ciphertext to get you know E zero and then get F one. So he using E zero and F one to decrypt the, the last gate to get G one. Okay, G one stands for one. So for bit one, so he can get the he can get the, uh, the output of all the garbage circuit. So this is a very basic idea of uh, back to like uh, 1986. Is 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 quite inefficient. It's, it's not efficient. So after 40 years, it's blazing fast. So uh, as there is a very nice property of garbage circuit. So you know the security of uh, uh, security GC is highly asymmetric. Means that it's secure against the malicious evaluators. Yes, it's 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 it's, it's very it's a very nice property. But it uh, it's only secure against the a semi-honest governors. So because the governors can, you know, they just have a, a different uh, function f prime to get information of the evaluator. So this is, uh, we actually using this kind of uh, asymmetric property of garbage circuit, which is, which is uh, very uh, good for us to do these optimizations. And you know, after 40 years, now GC is blazing fast. We're using a lot of, uh, you know, optimizations like ASNI instructions, like using this kind of set of uh, half gates, three halves. So in current implementations, we can govern like uh, 20 million end gates per second. And all these XOR gates are for free. So that's, that's blazing fast. And I think this is very fast. Okay, so far so good. It's about cover circuit, yeah? Uh, yeah, I think now is a new, uh, a new primitive called uh, interactive zero knowledge proof. So it's kind of very new to the community, I think. And uh, actually, by using this kind of VOL, yeah, I have to, sh I have to, I have to uh, 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 know that 
uh, it's interactive, and we cannot use Felix Shamir to make it a non-interactive because it's a, a private con, it's not a public con. So in this kind of uh, you know uh, uh, protocol, so the verifier we have a global secret called delta. So he will keep this kind of secret delta, and uh, uh, these two parties we are using uh, a, a tool called the VOLE. Vector obvious uh, linear evaluation yeah, is kind of a new, uh, you know, protocol new uh, to uh, to general massive types a topos of this random K I M I B I and it satisfies this you know K I equals M I plus B I times delta. So K I M I here are you know bits and B I is just one bit. So it's kind of information theoretical Mac. So it's widely used in this IJK systems. And uh, yeah, I'm not going to show how VLE generates this kind of tables. It's, it's very complicated, but I just show you that, yeah, we can do that. And we can do it very, very efficiently. We can like to, to generate like uh, uh, 10 million tables in just one minute, uh, in just one second, sorry. We can generate it very fast, efficiently fast. Very, very, very efficient. And, uh, yeah. So given these kind of tabs, we can do the knowledge proof. Yeah, it's very, it's very interesting. And uh, this kind of uh, you know, random tabs enable us to build very efficient interact the knowledge proofs. And you know, all these operations here is very cheap. It's not like you know, Snarks has to, uh, you know, to, to handle FFT, to handle you know, MSM, which is very heavy, and in IJK, Everything is very cheap. It's just bits. It's just uh, XOR. It's just uh, yeah, just XOR, and uh, that's that's there's uh, and you can speed you can speed it up using you know uh, instructions like AAS uh, NI instructions or other kind of you know SSC instructions. It's very fast. So yeah, you know here is a very simple trick that given. This kind of KI, MIBI for this all kind of random things. And uh, uh, witness W and uh, we, we uh, decompose it as bits. So the prover just send what we call the difference between a WI and a BI, send these kind of things to verifier. And then they can get, the, he will get a new KI. And this kind of KI and uh, MIWI also satisfy this kind of uh, you know, relation. This is what we call a MAC, a MAC of the uh, witness or the MAC, a MAC of the of the input. So, using this kind of uh, uh, a very simple way, we can handle. You know, we can prove you know circuit satisfiability for very large circuit. And yeah, the key point. So, if you're focusing on. Uh, Add, uh, uh, add gate is very, it, it can be done locally because it's linear. Everything's linear, you can, you can, you can handle this kind of add gates for free. So the major part here is how you handle this uh, multiplication gate. So suppose we have, you know, yeah, suppose we have these uh, two kind of, uh, three kind of uh, typos here, B1, B2, and B3, you have to prove that B1 equals B2 pi, uh, 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 times B2. So yeah, here's a, here's, a, here's a trick that we call, yeah, I know this is very complicated, just, uh, you know, <laughs> you just, uh, yeah, trust me that you can just, uh, you this kind of computation, you can get the result, what I call B equals A0 times A1 times, uh, 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 plus A1 times delta, and uh, it can, uh, these two, uh, these three typos can be rewrite in a new way, as long as B3 equals B1 times B2, as long as this kind of uh, terms is cancelled. So if it's cancelled, then uh, uh, means that uh, I'm proving a multiplication gate and uh, get the result in this kind of uh, uh, linear linear relation, which is very useful for us to prove. So what we have done is to to prove that. Uh, this kind of three tuples satisfies this property. So this property is very easy to check. So how to check? But just using, you know, check with mask then open. So we just mask everything. 
and then open this stuff. Because we are masking A0 and A1, so this message is, is totally random, and then we just send it back to verifier, and the verifier just check this linear uh, uh, equation uh, holes, and which is very fast. And then, in this way, we can um, efficiently uh, prove to the verifier that these two wires, uh, these three wires satisfy this kind of multiplication uh, relation, which is very fast. And also, uh, as we know, uh, in a circuit, there is a lot of multiplication gate. So there is a certain way called, you know, using random linear combination, we can check a lot of multiplication gate just to, uh, in one shot. So just using this kind of, you know, uh, random linear combination, it's a very standard way to uh, prove multiple, uh, you know, uh, multiplication gates, and this is very fast. Okay, so uh, here I'm gonna show you some uh, uh, numbers. So the reason we say that IJK is blazing fast is that from our experiment, we can prove one trillion and gate using just uh, two dollars, which is quite fast. And uh, uh, we can just, we can prove, you know, one trillion multi gates over a uh, uh, follow one bit field with just using uh, 2.5 US dollars. So this is kind of our, you know, uh, benchmark on different kind of machine. And the machine is very, you know, uh, it's, 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 it's not a powerful, it's a very, I'm powerful machine, just two vCPUs and the one gigabyte memory. So it's very, it's very cheap, it's, it's quite cheap. And of course, in, the, in our executive house to, you know, we are interactive, so we have to consider uh, this network bandwidth. So yeah, we are using some kind of proper bandwidth to do the, oper uh, to do the experiments. And, but it's still very fast, quite fast. And yes, we can do a lot of things using IJK. So in a paper yes, last year, so we can actually prove repeated computations. For example, we can prove you know, uh, uh, in a batching way. So I proved to you that, uh, for example, I proved, proved to you that uh, the input and output satisfies uh, a batch of you know, uh, uh, relations. And in this way, we can further reduce the communication size, say, you, I can prove one gate by using just the one point zero zero six four field elements, which is quite uh, low. And yeah, we can do ZKML. Uh, I know, yeah, now people in the community doing ZKML using SNARKs. Yeah, I know that. And uh, the, the, the benefit of using SNARKs is that uh, you can, uh, the result can be verified on chain because it's not interactive if um, it's not required to be non-interactive, then we can use IJK to proof, and uh, the, powerful, the power of IJK to prove machine learning model is much more uh, powerful than JSNAX. Actually, a paper uh, I wrote uh, last year is that we can you know, prove very complicated uh, uh, models like ResNet 101 means there is over 100 you know, uh, layers of the, of, the, of, the, of the network, and we can do it in less than like 20 minutes. And actually, the, the benefit of using IJK is that um, the memory consumption is not a bottleneck. We, you can just prove uh, as long as you want. You can just prove as long as you want, and can, you can also, you can, uh, at, at the end, you, you will finish the proof. But yeah, uh, there's, there's no memory limit here. And also, um, my new paper this year is just he can detecting bias in federated learning using IJK and uh, just to improve like 10 times faster and even more. So actually, we found that IJK, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite fast and has had a lot of uh, very exciting and interesting applications and uh, things that cannot do, but yeah, there's, uh, you know, this is the advantage of the IJK is that he has to be interactive. It has to be interactive. Yeah, that's the, that's the only, you know, uh, uh, this here. Okay, let's get back to our problem. So, yeah, we're trying to, you know, to do this kind of uh, proof system. 
So now using our new protocol, so it's kind of like this. So first of all, yeah, it's also a two-piece protocol, but we're just using semi-honest garbage circuit, which is like 10 times faster than uh, malicious SQL garbage circuit. Yeah, it's 10 times faster, just faster. And then, yeah, when send the message and then using semi-honest garbage circuit. And uh, yeah, this kind of thing is very similar to, 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 to Deco. And at the end, we're now using IJK to proof. We are not using you know, Zegas to prove this, this stuff because IJK is very compatible with these booting circuits. It can do it very fast. So using IJK, we have to prove that like, the KDF is computed correctly and uh, I know a lot of things. I know this kind of witness to generate this you know, uh, data. So yeah, this kind of, it, it, uh, just that simple, but yeah. I, I explain it in a simple way, but you know, if you want to look at uh, our paper, it's like 60 pages, and it's, it's, it's very complicated because we spend a lot, of, you know, spend a lot of time to to handle these corner cases. Because when we use this kind of a new idea or new uh, protocol, we have to handle a lot of corner cases, especially in the security proof, which is very, you know, which is it, it, very subtle. So that's our performance comparing to Deco. So yeah, we do a lot of uh, you know uh, experiments. So basically, we are like ten times faster than Deco in in different scenarios. Yeah, and um, we also show that our protocol is global scale, which means uh, we conduct a, a series of experiments by deploying uh, the verifier in like 18 cities all over the world. So yeah, let me explain a little bit. So we actually uh, uh, approve, uh, you know, Coinbase APIs and Twitter APIs. So the, the yellow one is Coinbase, the green one is, Coin, uh, is, is Twitter. So, and at the time, um, all, uh, the time outside, uh, the, the time form is, is online time, the total time, which means that we can separate the whole processor into off time and on time, which means that uh, uh, we can do the off time uh, before the, you know, the proof uh, starts, which is, you, know, can be, you can do it uh, anytime. And, um, and our proof, our, our verifier, so our verifier is deployed in, in San Francisco. And uh, yeah, you can show that the, the worst case is probably here, South Africa, and it takes like 10, 10 seconds to proof. But, if, uh, but there is a very natural way to optimize it. It's just by deploying the, the, uh, the verifier very close to this prover, because now uh, latency, uh, let, network latency and the network uh, uh, bandwidth is the major uh, bottleneck. But yeah, we can still, uh, uh, accept this kind of performance because uh, it's, it's, it's also very fast. It's also still, uh, you know, uh, satisfies a lot of uh, requirements in real applications. Yeah? Yeah, actually, as I said before, I put everything into a Chrome extension. That's our product. So in our product, it's, yeah, it's, it's Chrome extension. A product, you can actually access to different kind of centralized exchange, and uh, you can prove to Palo that uh, how many assets you are holding in a centralized exchange, for example, how many, uh, the, the amount of assets I'm holding in, in Coinbase, and you can prove to other guys that what kind of token you're holding. Yeah, you can take it as, you know, a, a private oracle that uh, I can prove uh, off-chain data to a third party, and this kind of data can be, you know, uh, transferred to on-chain and for on-chain applications. So, yeah, there, there is uh, one trick is that when we move to uh, Chrome extensions, uh, you know, the power of Chrome extension is much more less than, you know, a laptop because in, in the Chrome we cannot use this, uh, uh, you know, ASNI instructions, which, yeah, it's like, it's like, 10 times more, more slower, but yes, still, we can do the proof in, in less than 10 seconds to, to, for, for all this kind of proof. And uh, I think this is the first uh, 
product that can uh, uh, integrate uh, you know, these kind of uh, uh, privacy preserving Oracle things into uh, Chrome extensions. And the next step is to move it to, you know, uh, mobile, and which will be much faster because we can use, you know, ASNI and other stuff to speed up. So yeah, this is the, this is what we have done uh, 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 in our product. Yeah, ah, okay, that's basically uh, my presentation. And yeah, our paper is now available and uh, you can also download our extensions. And uh, yeah, you can, yeah, 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 add our uh, Twitter. So, yeah, you are happy to, uh, you know, to talk about anything, at the details of our product or our uh, protocols. Yeah, that's, that's, that's all. Yeah, thank you. So, any questions? <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's a very good question. So, so basically, yeah, we are thinking about the thing this way. So, uh, our vision is actually we want to bring you know Web two data to to you know to to a smart contract. So we want to bring every internet data to smart contract. So there is um, a gap now. So currently, smart contract can access you know uh, you know current data or historical on chain data or maybe public data using Oracle. But there's one thing missing, is the smart contract cannot access, you know, off-chain private data right now. This is a big miss, uh, you know, big gap between, you know, especially if we want to make smart contract more smarter, much more smarter to handle this kind of data-driven applications. There is, uh, we have to, to find a way to, you know, to bring all this internet private data to smart contract. This is our motivation. And uh, in this case, yeah, I, I think Snark can, yeah, theoretically Snark can do that, but it's not fast. Because in this case, uh, there's a lot of end users. It's not, it's not like layer two, you can uh, you know, deploy a very powerful machine to generate the proof. No, in this case, there is no machine. You just uh, have a laptop, you just have a coin stations. I'm a user, I just, uh, I can only tolerate like 10 seconds. Yeah, if it's one minute, okay. Down. I don't want to do anything. So performance now is uh, uh, performance now matters here. So we are choosing this kind of new algorithms or new you know primitives to uh, make good uh, you know user experience to enable you know privacy preserving applications using zk yeah something like that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. The, oh, no, not me, not me reading data, no, the client, the user, the the user, user reading data himself. Coinbase, for example, or any other company have structured this data, they maybe don't like that this data is going to occur. Uh, a very good question, so, yeah. In this case, it's maybe not too sensitive, but in other use cases, I can imagine that companies, with the companies, don't want to have their data stolen away or reclaimed by the users because then their business model is kind of yeah, but yeah, the, uh, this is a good question. But there is, you have to imagine there is a, uh, imagine that there is no such question, uh, there is no such solution. So there has to be a way that I have to have a way to access my data because yeah, this is my balance account. You, ha you have to show me the balance of, of my background, uh, back, uh, bank account, right? So there is ha there has to wait a bit away, and the you know most common way is that I can access my data using webs, you know. Uh, so, if you're using uh, uh, browsers, then you're using HTTPS. If you're using HTTPS, then we can use this kind of protocol. So, yeah, but yeah, I, I think in the future, it's my right to access my data, right? <laughs> Oh, well, that. to this data or not? I think Coinbase has a, a very interesting terms of condition for that data, different from other exchanges. So I think that they make the third. 
Yeah, it's actually got. Yeah, actually, all these kind of centralized exchange all, uh, already offer you know APIs for you to access your data, right? Yeah, but yeah, but yeah, if you are a company, your data company, you has to provide a way for you to access you know something, right? Yeah, you have a passport, and you have a username to access kind of kind of data. Maybe it belongs to you, maybe it's just public data, but there is there is a way to do that, right? Otherwise, there's no business model for this kind of data company, right? So there's, there has to be a way for you, for their you know, you know, business model, for their you know, commercial uh, you know, motivations for, to do that. So um, yeah, we assume that there, is, there has to be a way you, ha you can access at least part of your own data. Yeah, this kind of assumption, but we think that this kind of assumption is very valid. Yeah, thank you. Yeah? Um, I'm wondering why use a browser extension instead of an iframe. Is there something that needs to be hidden from um, like certain like, web processes, or just made sense to make it? Like, was there a reason for opting for an extension instead of, uh, instead of an iframe? Yes, what? Uh, was there a reason for opting for a browser extension instead of an iframe? Uh, no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, using a uh, clone extension is that, you know, in in the Web3 community, everybody is very com uh, you know, comfortable with clone extensions. But yeah, it's not the best choice. Actually, actually if the users want to use you know, a mobile phone, then we can put everything to a mobile phone. And it could be much faster. Because yeah, we have to, you know, you know, to kind of uh, satisfy the requirements of the clients now in the community. So everybody using, you know, using clone extensions, right? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the reason we are using this extension here. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Thank you.